Video games are supposed to be filled with stuff that stays with you. And as such, a lot of things are made to be as realistic as they can be, at least in the context that you're given. Sometimes that sits hard. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 most realistic but disturbing scenes in video games. And just a quick note before we get going, there are spoilers in this video. They're mostly not major ones, but there's a couple of big ones in here. So if that's not your thing, You've been warned. Starting off at number 10, it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's No Russian. And, and we're talking about the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. You kind of don't need to say a lot more. No Russian are the two words you have to say. The first Modern Warfare's shocking mid-game twist set the bar pretty high, and Infinity Ward knew they had to turn up the dial for the game's highly anticipated sequel. And they didn't just crank it up, they turned it up to 11, and then just kept cranking. The dial didn't know where to go from there just snap like you could call it tasteless you could call it shocking just to be shocking uh but i think it's pretty effective in its own twisted way just to give it some context uh, in this mission you play as undercover american agent working with the terrorist makarov the whole thing's pretty disorienting at first you start in an elevator lee guy says remember no russian remember no russian and then you walk into a busy airport. You've got a machine gun, the lead guy instructs you, uh, hey, start shooting now. Uh, there's nothing really else to say here. You play out a mass shooting, and it's it's kind of queasy. It starts to feel a little more like Call of Duty as it goes on, and you clash with the police, but the whole opening section where your allies are just ruthlessly gunning down fleeing civilians, it's, it's pretty grotesque, especially as the inciting incident for what ends up being a freakishly cartoonish Red Dawn United States gets invaded scenario. San Bravo, we're reading 70 bogeys in your sector. Please verify. <laughs> Very funny station. That's a big negative, over. As a thing to happen in a Call of Duty plot, it's pretty ridiculous, but taken just on its own, it's really effective and disturbing, and it's one that everybody and their mother remembers at this point, so let's not dwell on it too much, and, and let's move on to the next. At number 9 is Red Dead Redemption's Spare the Rod, Spoil the Bandit. Get to mission 11 and the game gets even darker. Spare the Rod, Spoil the Bandit is nearly at blood meridian levels of bleak, and that's saying something. The mission starts off straightforward enough. John Marston saddles up with the sheriff to deal with some nearby bandits, and uh, oh, they've been causing trouble, those bandits. After finding two separate campsites with bodies in them, the posse converges on a farm that looks abandoned, uh, but here's sounds coming from the barn. There's no good reason for that to be boarded up. Come on, John. Shoot that door open. Uh, they expect a fight, you shoot the lock, and you end up revealing a horror show of butchered animals and at least one mangled human body hanging from the rafters. It's especially disgusting if you look closely at the corpse, which I would not recommend. Uh, you can see that it's been castrated, which, gross. A few surviving women emerge, but they seem extremely shaken by the ordeal. You do catch up with the bandits and take care of them, but for a mission that starts off pretty normal, it ends pretty dark. And number eight is Heavy Rain's The Lizard. I can't think of a game that manages to be so goofy in some parts and so effective in others. Heavy Rain is really a game about moments. It barely manages to come together at the end, but some of those random moments are extremely tense and disturbing. Many of the game's best moments are from the trials that Ethan has to do in order to find the coordinates of his kidnapped son. The premise here is this crazy dude called the Origami Killer took his kid and is putting Ethan through saw-like tortures to prove how much he would sacrifice for his own flesh and blood or something like that. I, I've i beaten the game, but I'm not 100% sure that's exactly it. It's one of those games where it's really fun and morbidly interesting at a lot of different points, but the most disturbing of these trials, at least to me, is the third one titled The Lizard. Your mission here is simple. You got five minutes to cut off a section of your finger to pass the test. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. Good luck! The timer immediately starts, and it's a race to find the best piece of equipment to do the job. Looking around this dilapidated apartment feels sickening as you preview the various tools you can use to remove a part of your finger. There's some fairly effective weapons, like a butcher knife and a saw, but if you panic and use something crappy like a pair of scissors or some wire cutters, uh, the finger removal process gets particularly gross. The parts where Ethan has managed a chunk of finger, and it's hanging on by a thread, they're so nasty, I, I get a little sick thinking about it, honestly. It's 
unrealistic as far as things in heavy rain go. It's really blunt and stupid, but still shocking somehow. And number seven is Max Payne 3's necklacing scene. Yeah, uh, these, I mean, these are games that always have a certain level of darkness to them, but the third one gets particularly grim. There's a lot of shocking violence and unpleasant reveals, but to me, the most disturbing scene in the game is also the one that's directly based on an actual real world practice. Near the end of the mission in uh, Here I Was Again, halfway down the world, Max is pretty much at rock bottom. The woman he's been sent to save, Fabiana, is dead. She did. Oh, she did. Dead. He barely manages to escape the gang compound, only to find the entire favela he's in is under attack by the UFE, an anti-gang police special forces unit that kills everything in their way. When they hit the favelas, they came in hard and fast. It was fair game, as I was about to find out. The whole scenario is chaos up until you find the other two people the gang is held hostage, uh, Giovanna and Marcello. Now, Marcello is a rich idiot who's obviously indifferent to all the suffering of people below him, but he wasn't directly responsible for anything. He's just kind of a spineless patsy. So, for whatever reason, the guys holding him still choose to have him killed in one of the most, like, grim possible ways. They put him in tires, cover him in gasoline, and burn him to death. Marcello! This is called necklacing, and apparently it's an actual method of execution employed by gangs in Brazil. There's just something so incredibly blunt and cruel about this particular kind of death that makes it stand out to me. It's so pointless and nasty that I can't help but be disturbed by it. And number six is L.A. Noir's Polite Invitation, another game that goes to some pretty dark places. Uh, they're made worse by the fact that oftentimes there isn't anything you can do about it. Uh, yeah, a lot of the murder scenes in the serial killer cases are pretty disturbing, but at least you do manage to solve those murders in the end. Whereas with this scene, it's just one of the many examples of the deep-seated corruption at the heart of L.A. Near the end of the game, you switch protagonist to Jack Kelso, who, while working for the DA's office, begins his investigation into the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, a corrupt organization that's at the center of the game's story. Your first stop in the investigation is Curtis Benson, the vice president of California Fire and Life. He's a major cog in the conspiracy, but when you go investigate his house, you find something much more disturbing. You're going in expecting to find evidence of corruption and insurance fraud, but what you find is way worse. Uh, it's a kid. And listen, I don't want to be disgusting here, so just put two and two together. Kelso questions the girl and learns that she is just 12 years old. Uh, to make matters worse, she defends him by saying he buys her nice things, and it's all around, like, not good. Pretty disgusting, even if nothing is seen and everything's kind of all heavily implied. Uh, we're talking about one of the most awful things that people in the world do. Uh, worst part, there's nothing that can be done. You just kind of have to leave her there. You can't do anything about Benson. He just gets to keep doing whatever he's doing with no repercussions. Uh, by the end, at least some of the masterminds of the conspiracy get taken in by the police, including Benson, but you don't really play a part in that. That. It's kind of a nauseating moment that feels really, really real in like an unpleasant way. Uh, even if the graphics don't, wow, do they look dated. <laughs> And number five is Call of Duty Modern Warfare The Reboot. The entire Farah flashback. Mission 9 of the Modern Warfare Reboot campaign is the cavalcade of trauma. There's multiple pretty disturbing moments here, all made worse by the fact you're experiencing it through the eyes of a child. You're playing as a young Farah during a flashback to the Russian invasion that sets up the story. Starts off uh, traumatic enough with your character stuck under a collapsed building before freeing herself and getting a face full of her dead mother. More bombs follow as people panic on the streets uh, where Russia and soldiers open fire on a group of civilians and then there's a poison gas attack where you get to see people slowly die in next-gen detail. In any other game, this entire sequence would be disturbing enough, but it's just getting warmed up. When your father gets you back to the house, a big soldier busts in and starts beating the hell out of him, along with your brother, with an eventual death, your father, and then they capture your brother, which the big guy intends to use as a human shield, just for maximum grotesque evilness. After a sneaking section where the little girl has to murder a big Russian guy with a knife, you escape with your brother, use a gun for the first time, which is appropriately difficult, like you're still playing as a kid after all and then you get captured at the end. There's a lot to cover here, so it may not sound as disturbing as it actually is in the game, but trust me, there's something especially upsetting about little kids being in peril, and they go through the absolute ringer in this mission. Okay, we can go. 
And number four is The Last of Us Part 2, THE death scene. You know, the one that was the source of endless controversy when the game came out. Uh, but I think at this point, people have cooled off about it. It's been about three years, right? Uh, uh, well, maybe. I don't know. I, I'm kind of thinking about how people are still arguing about the ending of the first game, so I don't know. So let's just pull the band-aid off. It's a scene where Joel dies. Old Joel. And what makes it hit so hard isn't just the brutality of the death. It's the main character of the previous game. This is a guy people spent a lot of time as and learn to like or at least understand so seeing them go down in such a pointless and cruel way is really disturbing it's not idealized in any way either joel doesn't get a moment of revenge he's just a dead man the moment he enters that room when he gets a shotgun blast to the knee you just immediately know it's over for him in terms of violence it probably could have been worse joel's death never gets as gross as negan smashing in glenn's head in the walking dead for example but the flat sterile way it's all shot makes you feel like a fly on the wall and that kind of makes it worse there's no sentimental send-off and by the end he's just mumbling incoherently yeah magic zombie fungus apocalypse isn't really that realistic compared to the real world settings of most of the other games on this list but this death could have easily happened in the real world and it would have been equally as disturbing And number three is Spec Ops The Line, the white phosphorus scene. It's the moment in Spec Ops The Line. Um, just like the line is the line. It's the moment. Sorry, that was that was that was too much. I, I acknowledge this. Uh the sequence where you either realize the game is something special or possibly turn it off in disgust is this. Spec Ops The Line was made to be a bit of a subversive take on the military shooter genre. In most games, you gleefully commit war crimes like it's no big deal, but The Line makes you want to feel the consequences of those actions. The game starts off pretty straightforward. It's a relatively normal military mission, but the events of the characters, uh, it all gets more and more depraved as it goes along. It all crescendos in Chapter 8, also uh, known as the gate. To continue your mission, you need to get through the titular gate, which is a heavily guarded military base. The main character, Walker, and his team get back to get a better look. It seems like the place is going to be impossible to breach until they find an abandoned mortar launcher with white phosphorus shells. If you don't know, white phosphorus is a chemical agent used mostly in tracers and smoke bombs, but it can also be used as an extremely potent incendiary weapon. That's what most people know it for, uh, and the effects can be really devastating. Let's just keep moving. Uh, your main guy decides to clear the defenses at the gate by using the mortar, which ends up being far more effective than they expected. The dead and dying are just everywhere. Soldiers slowly dying and burning alive. It's bad enough, but then you get to the checkpoint and you find the corpses of hundreds of civilians. It goes from upsetting to truly disturbing. You can tell people tried to escape the blast, but they are killed, and it includes a grisly scene of a mother holding her child, but now frozen in death. Up until this point, it was getting harder and harder to justify your character's actions in the game, but this is where Walker really starts to break. The whole sequence might annoy people because you're really given no option how to proceed. Like, the game doesn't let you choose not to use white phosphorus, which is, again, a war crime. And oh, does it not let you think about it in any way other than it being a war crime. It's a shocking moment, and it's really iconic, uh, and definitely the most disturbing scene in the whole game. And number two, what remains of Edith Finch, uh, Gregory Finch, even with a whimsical presentation and a pretty light tone, this scene manages to still be extremely disturbing, especially for people who are parents. If you don't know what this game is, it's basically an adventure game about exploring an old house. As you explore, you begin to relive the memories of the previous inhabitants, all family members who died from an unfortunate mishap or a cruel twist of fate. With a premise like that, you'd think the game would be kind of macabre, but there's a wry humor to everything that keeps it from getting too dark uh, until you find the bathtub where you relive the death of Gregory Finch. There's no easy way around it, uh, so I'll just say it. Gregory was one, as in years old, he was one of them. Reliving his final memories, you see the world through the eyes of a child lost in his imagination, but the reality is that he drowned in the bathtub while his parents were arguing over the phone. The moment could have easily felt like it's trying to be edgy or come off as cloying, but somehow it pulls off both charming and extremely disturbing at once, which seems like the 
ultimate contradiction, but it works despite that. And number one is Dead Space 2's eyeball scene. Everyone remembers this scene, and for good reason, it's one of the most wince-inducing things ever put in a video game. Now, Dead Space 2 isn't exactly real. Obviously, it's a sci-fi future with alien zombies called necromorphs, the biggest of which are actual moons. Um, but this scene in particular could happen anywhere. One of the scariest and nastiest moments in the series occurs without a monster in sight. Turns out, all you need to really freak people out is a little ocular trauma. Ah! It takes a long time to get here too, the scene doesn't really occur until the end of the game in chapter 13, where you need to get information to take down the marker, the sort of the red signal that's turning people crazy and activating the necromorphs. In any other game, you just read a book, but this is dead space, so instead Isaac has to inject a needle through his eye into his brain. Seriously, that is what you have to do, and it's horrible. To make it worse, it's not just a thing that happens in a cutscene, you have to control the machine so that it goes in properly, uh, if you take your eyes off the screen, you will die. Everyone's first instinct here is to look away, but the devs knew you'd try to do that, so they forced you to look. We all have eyes, and nobody likes pointy things directed at them. There's just something viscerally unpleasant about that, so it's almost impossible not to get some sympathy for our main guy Isaac here, but wow, I think if I were in his shoes, I'd just say screw it, the necromorphs get to win, because I'm not taking a needle in the eye. I'm not doing that. <laughs> And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We have a lot of brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.